this video, we'll take you through creating your first environment light with Adobe Substance 3D Sampler. Environment lights can be shot on location and let you integrate a 3D object into a photograph with correct lighting. We start from a set of photos taken with a 360 camera. If you don't have a 360 camera, you can download the files used in this video and work with those. I'm using a Ricoh Theta camera, but the principle should apply to other cameras as well. What's most important is that you shoot multiple bracketed photos. Bracketed photos means each photo is more exposed than the last one. This lets Sampler rebuild the light intensity, as it's impossible to capture accurate lighting with just a single photo. To get your brackets to work in Sampler, they need to use the same exposure value offset. To keep it simple, you start from an underexposed photo with a very short shutter time and double the shutter time for each next bracket. So starting from 1 25,000th, going to 1 12,500th, 1 64,000th, and so forth. With the theta, I keep it simple and have a set of brackets that works for most cases. You will have to adjust this if you switch between night and day settings. Once you're ready with shooting, transfer all the bracketed photos to your computer and group them per location set. I'm using JPEG files instead of RAW. The quality is slightly less, but it's easier and less work to use. Now, let's get started with the sampler. We'll create a new project. Then, in the project window, I'll click the plus next to environment lights and pick new environment light. This creates a new light resource that works a bit different than a material. We'll start by bringing our photos in. I'll be using an outdoor set to start with. Drag and drop all photos into the empty layer stack on the right. Sampler brings up a template window, suggesting you to use the HDR merge template. This does exactly what we want, so click OK. After some calculation, the photos are merged and we can see something happening to our 3D view. With environment lights, you'll want to customize your display settings a bit to understand what's going on. Go to the viewer settings in the bottom left, open the panel and scroll to the meshes. I find the preview sphere mesh works well to understand lighting. Then, Open the 2D view window by pressing the button at the top right or by pressing the hotkey 2. The 2D window lets you see and interact with your lighting environment directly. Right now it's showing as a flat 2D image, but if you find the Enable Projection button to the bottom left, below the 2D view, you can set it to wrap and behave as a 360 panorama. To look around in this mode, use Alt plus left mouse button. Now we can start tweaking our environment with filters. Let's check out the HDR merge layer first. It has two settings. The input exposure delta tells sampler the difference in light between each bracket. One EV means the light halves between each photo, which is exactly how we set up our camera. If you take a different approach, you'll have to calculate the EVs yourself and adjust this settings. The output auto exposure does a good job most of the time. It tries to find a good balance for you. The offset slider below lets you make adjustments to the overall exposure of, for the image. It's best to use this so that the environment in the background looks correctly exposed, not over bright or too dark. First up, I want to adjust the color temperature a bit. This photo was taken at 5000 Kelvin and it should be a bit warmer. If you hide the viewer settings, you'll see the assets window. I'm going back to the starter assets. In the search bar, type temp and you should see the color temperature filter show up. Drag the icon onto the top of your layer stack. This adds a new filter with new settings. You can adjust the color temperature warmer or colder. This sunset photo can do with being a bit warmer. We'll go for about minus 0.18. You should notice that the light coming from the sun seems to be missing a bit. That's because the sun is so bright, it's not possible to capture its full intensity with brackets and a 360 camera. No problem, we can fix that in Sampler. Let's add another filter, but use the Quick Filter button above your layer stack. There, it shows you all filters currently available. We'll choose Sphere Light. The Sphere Light won't be immediately visible. Look around your 2D view with Alt plus left mouse you'll see a large white disk somewhere above the horizon. Let's drag that onto the sun. It's hard to tell exactly where the sun is, so we can make use of an extra option in the 2D view. 
Right next to the Enable Projection button is the Viewport Exposure slider. This lets you temporarily darken the exposure in the 2D view. Setting it to around minus 3 or minus 5 reduces the sun glare and helps position the light. You can see this sphere is blocking light rather than emitting it. In the settings, find the sphere radius and reduce it. 0 0.15 or smaller works well. The smaller, the sharper the shadows will be. Above that, the exposure controls the intensity of the light. With this setting, we can fake an intense sun. Radius and exposure are linked, so you have to tweak both. Look at your mesh and try to get the light's exposure high enough so it doesn't burn out on your mesh. You can turn on another setting to help judge the lighting intensity. Instead of viewer settings, open the shader settings below it. There's a checkbox for shadows that draws some simple, real-time shadows for your brightest light. It's not perfectly ray traced quality, but it helps you judge the overall look. I ended up with a radius of 0.05 and an exposure of 13.2. All that's left is to tweak the temperature to match that warm sunset color. 5400 Kelvin looks good. We're getting closer. If you look down, you can see the tripod the camera was sitting on. Ideally, this is removed to not affect our light. There's a filter for this called Nadir Patch. Once added, you can see it adds two squares on the floor. It works like clone stamp that's constrained to the floor. You just move the source patch around to find a good match for the ground around the tripod. Again, use Alt plus left click to rotate the view to find a good spot. For an irregular floor like this gravel, it's pretty easy to get right. There are a few settings to play with, like patch hardness, that help in some cases. Once you're happy, make sure to turn off Show Frames Helper to disable the preview helpers so they don't show up in the final result. Finally, I think my camera and tripod weren't exactly level, so the horizon is off ever so slightly. To fix this, I'll add the Straighten Horizon filter. This lets me set two points on the horizon, and Sampler will straighten things based on the line between them. They're hard to set at first because the image moves while I try to adjust the points. To get around this, there's a drop-down at the top right of the 2D view. If you choose Layer Inputs here, it shows the result of the previous filter instead of the current filter. It lets me find those exact horizon points. This can be a bit tricky in projection mode, so use the projection button to disable it if needed. You can check for yourself afterwards by toggling filter visibility with the eye icon next to each filter. Our environment light is done. Let's name it by right-clicking and choosing Rename. Then, we'll save our project in case we need to come back to it. Now, we have two ways to use it outside of Sampler. For both methods, click the Share icon in the top right. If you're using Substance 3D Stager or Painter, you can send it with a single click using the Send To functionality. Inside Stager, you can then use the environment to integrate an object into your regular photograph taken on the same location. If you want to use the environment elsewhere, click the Export As button instead. Make sure you've named it, choose a path, and change the format to EXR. Right now, EXR is the best format for light environments. You might get incorrect results with other files. Just click Export, and your file is written to disk, ready for use elsewhere. That's all there is to it. Go out and have some fun now.